Very often, a laser spec gives a range of values for various parameters. Power from x to y, beam diameter from this to that, and so on. Now we need to measure the laser beam and we need to choose the right sensor. And here's where the fun begins. Let's say the laser spec says, pulse energy, 1 millijoule to 100 joules. Pulse rate, 1 hertz to 1000 hertz. We might be cautious and look for a sensor that can handle all of those numbers. But wait, 100 joule pulses at 1 kilohertz? That means the average power is 100 kilowatts. Is that really the average power of my beam? If it isn't, then I've fallen into the worst case combination trap. In some cases, the Ophir Sensor Finder tool can warn you when you're heading toward that trap. That will only happen when the worst case combination of parameters is technically impossible. For example, pulse width might be specified as up to 30 milliseconds, and pulse frequency might be given as 10 to 200 hertz. If we enter the highest numbers for all of the parameters into the sensor finder, in this example, 30 millisecond pulse width and 200 hertz frequency, we get an error since these two values don't match each other. At 200 hertz, the time period between pulses is 1 over 200 hertz or 5 milliseconds. So a 30 millisecond pulse width is impossible. But it doesn't always work out so smoothly for us. The sensor finder is a wonderful tool but it only does most of the thinking for us. In such a case, it's important to check what the actual worst case combination, or perhaps combinations, of conditions of measurement will be. Let's consider a more detailed example from an actual recent inquiry for an energy sensor. We'll walk through the thought process and see how to do this. Here are the laser specs. 0 0.1 to 100 microjoules, 10 kilohertz, 10 nanosecond pulse width, 532 to 600 nanometer wavelength, 0 0.2 to 4 millimeters spot size. For this energy range, we have an energy sensor called the PE9ESC. Maybe we could just stop here, but hang on a moment. Combining the worst case numbers, energy 100 microjoule, pulse rate 10 kilohertz, and 0 0.2 millimeter spot diameter, we find that we have energy density somewhat over 300 millijoules per square centimeter, that's reasonable, and power density over 3 kilowatts per square centimeter. This will clearly have to be reduced, but let's go through the steps. Let's first consider power and power density. The maximum average power, the worst case, is 100 microjoules times 10 kilohertz, or 1 watt. So the PE9 ESC sensor is okay so far, it can handle up to 2 watts. The PE9ESC's rated maximum power density is 30 watts per square centimeter. We always recommend to take a safety margin of about 50%, meaning we want to limit ourselves to about 15 watts per square centimeter if possible. With 1 watt of average power, that power density is reached with a beam diameter of 3 millimeters. You can check this easily with the sensor finder or the power density calculator tool. So again, so far we found that the worst case for average power, the highest average power, imposes on us a requirement for a beam diameter of at least 3 millimeters. Now we'll consider energy and energy density. For 10 nanosecond pulse width, the PE9 ESC's rated maximum energy density is 0.1 joules per square centimeter. Again, taking that safety margin, we want to limit ourselves to 0.05 joules per square centimeter. With help from the sensor finder, we can see that we reach that energy density for 100 microjoule pulses when the beam diameter is 0.5 millimeters. Remember, the worst case for average power, the highest average power, required a beam diameter of at least 3 millimeters. We now figured out that the worst case for energy, the highest energy, can live with a beam diameter of anything over 0.5 millimeters. So the maximum average power density is our limiting factor. To measure this laser, we'll have to keep it reduced. We can do that by increasing the spot diameter or decreasing the average power. We'll either have to keep the beam's diameter at the sensor location to a minimum of 3 millimeters, not 0.2, or we'll have to limit our average power, either by reducing the maximum energy per pulse 
or reducing the pulse repetition rate. Now we can check two final questions. One, whether we'll really need to go down to 0.1 microjoules and up to 100 microjoules. And two, whether the 10 kilohertz rep rate applies throughout the energy range. Maybe at the highest energies this laser's rep rate comes down, for example. If yes, we can use the PE9 ESC, but subject to the power density limits we just found. If these limits we found are problematic, we will need to use two separate sensors. The basic idea is that we go through two steps. We separate between the parameters and consider each one and the limits it imposes. And we check for the actual worst case combination of parameters that we'll really encounter in our application and that we'll really need to measure. Going through this thought process cleanly and systematically will help us avoid falling into the worst case combination trap. Contact us to see how we can help you with your application directly through our local representatives or via our website.